Yes. So the, the next, uh, our next guest speaker is uh, an aerospace engineer. Uh, her name is uh, Michelle Aishemimri. Uh, Michelle, are you here? Yes. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, let's adjust the, the sound here in the, in the room because it was a bit violent. Violent. Yeah, it's better. Can you turn your video on or it's not a good time for you to do that? No, I turned it on. Is it not showing it on your side? No, can... It's online, but I can you see your here? Turned. Yeah, please. So we can... Online, they can see you, but not in the room. And we have quite a large audience in the room, so it would be nice if we can see can you. you see me now? <laughs> Is it too dark? Because I can move if it's too dark. Uh, just wait a minute. Okay, so can we in the room change the, the screen to see Michel? Okay, great. Yeah, it's a bit dark. Oh, it's okay. Now we can so, see you really well. It's good? Okay, good. Yeah, it's good. Thank you so much. So yeah, so Michel, will, uh, I will interview her uh, at the beginning. And then if you have any question, uh, you, uh, you can uh, um, ask at the end of this uh, interview. So Michel, thanks for being with us today. Uh, you could not be here in person because you are actually in another event in Riyadh. Um, right. So right. thanks for making the effort to the double, uh, <laughs> double uh, involvement in the International Women's Day. Um, First, can we start by, can you say a bit word about your career, just in a few words, introduce yourself? Sure. sure. I think, first of all, I would like to thank you for having me uh, at this event. I'm uh, fortunate to be there, and you are right. I am at two events at the same time, but I wanted to make sure that I do participate, uh, given your gracious um, invitation. So I am uh, Michelle Ashmemri. I'm an aerospace engineer, aerospace entrepreneur, commercial pilot, and a lover of aviation and space. Um, my inspiration started when I was six years old, when my mother took me in Saudi Arabia to the desert in Aneza, uh, which is a region in Saudi, in Qasim, that has very vast deserts. And when I was there, I looked up at the, at the sky and I was inspired. From then on, I knew that my passion and my calling is to become an aerospace engineer because I want to go to space, I want to understand space. So I figured the best way to do that is to make rockets. And if I make rockets, then I can get on this rocket and go to space. So I, that's exactly what I did. So my uh, bachelor's degree, I have two bachelor degrees in uh, aerospace engineering and applied mathematics. And then my master's is also in aerospace engineering. My research is on nuclear thermal propulsion, uh, which is the type of rocket you would go to send humans to Mars that was funded by NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. So they paid my tuition, luckily. I worked for uh, the defense industry for some time. Then I left the defense industry and started my own company when I was 26 years old. My focus was on developing uh, rockets to put small satellites into low earth orbit because they needed um, these types of rockets. And then I'm also a consultant and have been a consultant for some time. So that kind of gives you like a quick overview of what's going on. Yeah. Thank you. So you, you talk about the, the professional aspect, but you have a, a kind of um, double uh, work because you're also an influencer. So you are an engineer and an influencer. Uh, can, where did you choose this double aspect on your professional work? So in 2000, I think, and seven, 2017, my cousins came to visit me in Paris and they were like, hey, why aren't you on Snapchat? Why aren't you on social media? I was like, I don't know. What is Snapchat? I didn't even know because I was too busy with work. And they're like, you need to create a Snapchat. I was like, what am I going to do? They're like, I don't care. Talk about your toothpaste. You'll figure it out. And so I was like, I don't know. And they took my phone and created an account for me. They're like, okay, go ahead, start. So I, I started. And initially, I honestly had no idea what to do. So then I was like, you know what? No one talks about aerospace and space especially not in Arabic, and especially my Arabic at the time, because I hardly ever use it, wasn't really that amazing. I mean, it was good, but not amazing, especially in the technical terms. So I started, I was like, yes. no, I'm going to talk about rockets and space. And that's how it started. Then people loved it, and I continued to do that. Then I started to make YouTube videos because I felt Snapchat video quality wasn't that good, and that's how 
the social media influencer aspect started. So I realized that being the first aerospace engineer in the GCC came with a huge responsibility to give back and to encourage people to join STEM. And if I can do it, then they can do it. And that was really the main purpose. Yeah, that's really interesting. And it's funny because you're right, in aerospace engineering and in mechanical engineering, usually people are not too much into social media. So it's good that we have people like you to help us in communicating better. Okay, so what also you, you mentioned is that uh, you, your Arabic is not that great, uh, meaning that your English is perfect. So you are a bit in between two cultures. Uh, can you tell us how some example of uh, pros and cons being, being in between two cultures? Yeah, I mean, there, obviously there's good stuff and then there's bad stuff in, in any culture, right? And, and it's, it's mainly due to, I think, lack of exposure or lack of, you know, experience in certain things. So in terms of being in the U.S., sometimes I do feel like sometimes you feel like you don't belong to any um, culture because you feel like you're lost. And that's difficult, but you need to know that you are your authentic self. So when I was in school, for example, in, in the U.S., I was born and raised in the U.S., they have always seen me as an outsider, you know, and that kind of sometimes makes you feel, you know, emotionally withdrawn uh, uh, compared to the rest of the people because they will always be like, oh, she's different. Um, she's an Arab, you know, and then all they associate me with oil. I don't know why, but they think I own oil wells in Saudi. I don't know. So to me, that's not cool. And in, in Saudi, I was also on... Uh, on the other side as well. Like I didn't necessarily feel like I belong either because they, I would come in with my ideas about going to space. And there are many times where I've had like uh, a teacher in school when I came to Saudi to learn. And I remember what she told me and that really hurt me because luckily I have a very strong personality because I kept telling everybody, I'm going to go to space. I want to make rockets. I want to go to space. I love space. And she came to me and she's like, listen, your place is to get married and to be hit by your husband. These were her exact words. And if your husband chooses to do so. And I was like taken aback. I was so shocked. I was like, what? I was like, listen, these might be the restrictions and what your aspirations are. These are not mine. Please do not impose your limitations on me. My family um, loves me and wants me to do whatever I want. So don't impose your limitations. And as an adult, when I look back at that experience, I'm like scared because, you know, I have a strong personality and I have a family that backs me up. What if I wasn't that person? What if it was someone else that she said this to? That person would be completely destroyed and they would be like, wait a minute, maybe she's right. Maybe uh, I'm not supposed to do this stuff. And then she will discourage this person from pursuing something. And this person could contribute so much and significantly to in the future but you put a deterrent on that. Like a, a, she put an entire obstacle and imposed her limitations on someone else. So it, it scares me to see something like this. Yeah, we can understand that is scary indeed. Uh, I move to a more um, easy question. What, what is the thing you are the most proud of? Um, from my career? Mm. As you want, or career or personal, up to you. I think, I think the thing I'm most proud of is um, the fact that I'm very resilient and determined to accomplish even when I feel let down by many things. So I'm very determined, I'm very focused to achieve things. I'm very proud of the fact that at a young age, I was able to create a company. And when people were like, Mish, you're nuts for creating a company. You're too young, you don't know what you're doing. And I was like, you know what? I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. Because if I don't try, I will not know how far I can go. And I was able to go pretty far because I, I proved that from a technical standpoint, we are very, I'm very capable. And even from a business standpoint, I'm very capable in creating a company and, and trying to pr produce a product in, and from development. So it's not like something that's you know, available. It's starting from scratch from the development standpoint. And I succeeded in that. And I'm very proud of that. Um, I think if I didn't, and I listened to those comments, I probably would never know what I'm capable of. So I, I think that I'm very proud of. I'm also very proud of the fact that, you know, I actually flew an airplane before I, I drove a car. 
because my father was a pilot and I flew with him and I've always wanted to become a pilot, but I never got the chance when I was in high school, I was into robotics and so forth. But even as an adult in 2018, I made sure that I take time off and actually pursue that. And I managed to do it and get all the certifications I wanted. So private pilot, commercial pilot, instrument rating, multi-engine rating and so forth, because I love it. And so I'm very proud of that with respect to what I've accomplished. Yeah, you can be proud of that, definitely. Thank you. Um, may I ask, what was uh, the most challenging for you so far? Oh, my God. There's so many challenges in this. I think, uh, I, and I, think I still have more challenges to come. Um, I think, I mean, from a, like when I started my company, let's use that. Um, when I started my company, obviously, there's a lot of challenges in trying to secure money, to continue because you believe in something so much and then failing to do so really hurts. So that was very, very hard for me. And actually I was depressed for about six months uh, when I had to put the company on hold because I couldn't find investors, but knowing that I succeeded from a technical standpoint. So I was super, super in pain to the point that I, I told myself, I don't want to do anything with aerospace anymore. I refuse to read news and all that. But then I remember telling, because, you know, when you're really hurting, you should talk to a therapist. So I went and talked to a therapist and I said, I don't want to do aerospace. I don't want to read aerospace. And she said, trust me, it's your calling. The day will come, you will wake up and you will be back at it. And she was 100% right. It only took a few months for me to come out of that darkness. In terms of being as a woman in my field, when I worked for the industry, yes, there were a lot of hardships. I had um, to tell you a very a, a story, but I'm going to try to do it very two stories actually I walk into I was young obviously I was a woman I walk into a room I'm immediately dismissed immediately like oh girl young she's probably you know writing notes and that's it and I'm supposed to present a design review in front of a committee of very senior engineers but they immediately dismiss me for whatever reason maybe because I'm small also I don't so then I walk in they dismiss me and I can see it in their faces then it becomes my turn to present and I start talking and it's, I can look across the room and it's like I slapped everybody in their faces because they were shocked that this little young woman is talking about how to design this rocket. And it, it, it's kind of like discouraging because I'm like, well, why is it that you judge me before you know what I'm doing, you know? And it takes, it takes a lot of thick skin to accept this sort of thing. Another experience I had is when um, an engineer... So, you know, you work in a team, you're supposed to receive data from somebody, you're supposed to integrate that data in order to continue your work. And I was in a very fast paced program. So every time they want data, they want it yesterday, but they tell you about it today. So it's, it was very intense. This guy, I don't know what his problem, he's not old. He's like maybe eight years older than I am. Okay. Refused to deliver the data. And he knows that the work I have to do will take a while. And the meeting that we're going to have is tomorrow. Didn't send the data. Next day comes, he still didn't send the data. One hour before the meeting, he sends the data. And I'm like, from when I, when I started to realize that he's trying to sabotage my work so I can show up to the meeting with no data, I started preparing everything. So I wrote the code. I prepared everything so that I click a button, wait 10 minutes for the thing to run, and everything is set up. The paper, everything. I wrote everything. Uh, quickly so that when the data is sent because he has no choice but to send it even if it's 30 minutes before and he sent it one hour before that meeting and I was like this guy 100% wants to sabotage me so I planned ahead and I managed to deliver that data but I was like I, I can't deal with it. this guy is ridiculous same guy I walked to meeting he comes in late to the meeting after I've described like the drag profile of this thing and describing the aerodynamics of what's going on and how I'm going to tackle this is like a think tank for a specific type of rock situation. And then he walks in and there's a, my supervisor and he's like on the same level. It's not like he's higher than I am or something. And he walks in and he starts like, uh, you know, asking questions to diminish me, not because he had valid questions. He kept asking and trying to diminish me, trying to diminish me, trying to diminish me a couple of times to the point that the supervisor was like, listen, you came in late. She already addressed those. So stop asking questions. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. So it appeared to me that he has a, some psychological issue or he feels threatened by me 
whatever emotional thing. But I recognize dealing with this guy, I have to plan ahead. I have to ensure that no matter what he tries, that he will never succeed because I will always be one step ahead of him. And that's exactly what I did. Thank you very much. This is something that I think resonates to many of us. So I'm really happy that you share with us this, uh, this uh, difficult time for you. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have so much time, so I, I have other questions, but I would like to give a chance to the audience if you have any questions for Michelle. There is no... Yeah, go ahead. Hello, uh, thank I, I you don't... for your... Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't see you though. Oh yeah, that's not possible. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very okay, much for your talk. Very in in encouraging talk. And I wanted to ask you uh, exactly like, what, what would you say uh, to women that are also struggling in these same situations that you like, like that you have already come through? Uh, what would you say for them not to give up and just to con continue? Thank you. Uh, that's that's a very good question. I think it's very important that I and unfortunately, I wish I could tell you otherwise, but I think women have to develop very thick skin, especially in STEM fields, in order to push forward. And remember, you know, you're not only doing it for yourself; you're doing it for yourself and everyone behind you, because you need to set and you need to set the standard and push the envelope and lead in that effort. You know. We are where we are today because there's many women before us that tried to do this, that struggled, that have been put down, that have been diminished, that their names were removed from papers, even though they're the main contributor. All these occurred in the past. But today, we can, all of us can rest assured we can write a paper and put our names on it because these women, their names were taken off those papers. So my point is, it's a responsibility. Think of it as a responsibility to yourself. Think of it as a responsibility to the women that come after you that you have to push that door and so you have to do that struggle and i think that's really what pushes me forward even if i get tired i remind myself this is not just for me i have a responsibility and a duty to every woman that's going to come after me okay i think this is a great uh, way to finish this interview i thank you so much michelle it was really inspiring and uh, it resonated a lot with us so and thank you so much so for taking the time on your other duty to to talk to us today i hope to welcome you soon in in Kaos, the next time you will be around thank you again inshallah thank you so much thank you <laughs>